Hi, Irina Paratris here, and today I'm sharing a special installment of Found in Fresno by taking you behind the scenes of the making of a rogue show. Uh, in particular, this is Confessions of a Church Organist, put on by Tony Imperatrice. Uh, today, you're going to see a first reading of the script of Confessions of a Church Organist, and a meeting with the director, Randy Stump, and I'll also be in the mix because I'm the producer for this show. So, let's take a look. I had a sophisticated system for maintaining, supporting my drinking habit. There was, of course, the classic, drinking beer at the liquor store. And across the street from uh, the high school that I went to, there was this lady that we all called Ma. And if you would go listen to her stories and spend some time with her, she'd take you down to the liquor store and buy you whatever you wanted. And on top of all of that, I had the church. You see, the church was a terrific place for a teenage alcoholic. First of all, I had keys to the place so I could practice. And they had all this wine stored up in the back and didn't seem to miss a bottle or two now and then. And let me tell you something. Being all alone in a dark church, drunk off your ass, practicing the organ, that's kind of trippy. Okay. Saturdays were also the big day for weddings, and I've played at hundreds of weddings. It was you know, a really great way to make extra money. And I was actually kind of good at the wedding thing because I could play the piano, I could play the organ, and I could sing. So I was kind of a complete wedding music package. But, you know, what is it about weddings that causes brides, more often mothers of brides, to pick the sappiest songs ever written? For me to sing at their wedding in church at Mass. At this point, I'm going to do a little thing that I'm still putting together called the Sappy Song Medley, and I'm going to do okay. a, 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 just a, a real quick, maybe two, three minutes of just little hints of really bad songs that people have had me sing at weddings. And on your musical yeah. side, I have no input on that. I, okay. have, I have really liked choices you've made and when you've chosen to attack them. So I'm not going to make a note, because I have a note going into that okay. that I want you to have. Okay, good. All right, and then here's the first wedding story. There was a really big wedding I played at at a neighboring church, and at that particular church, you really couldn't see down the aisle from where the organ was positioned. So I had a person spotting for me to let me know when things were going on. So it comes time for the bride to march in, and I start to play. And I'm playing along for a while, and I get to a point in the music where I'm thinking, you know, they're probably done about now. So I look over at my spotter, and she gives me this. Keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Well, so I continued into this interlude section that I never really played at weddings, but it was a nice part of the music, so I continued with that, and got to the end of that, and looked over at my spotter, and keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Okay, so I went into the recapitulation, and then, you know, I'm starting to get toward the end of the music, and I look over at my spotter, and she's like, keep playing, keep playing, keep playing, and I, I'm starting to improvise and making shit up, and I, I'm running out of stuff to do, and finally she gives me the cutoff. Wow. So then my spotter waves me over, and we step out into the hall off the balcony, and she tells me what happens. Oh, my God. The father of the bride is proudly marching his daughter down the aisle. And they get about halfway when the mother of the bride jumps from her seat, runs down the aisle, gets in a fist fight with the dad, shoves him in the nearest pew, and marches her daughter the rest of the way. Wow. So the, the rest of the service goes off without a hitch, and um, after it was all over, I went to... Uh, climbed downstairs out of the balcony, and, and the bride happened to be standing there. And so I offered my congratulations, and then she started to apologize to me, and I told her, no, no, you don't need to worry about that. And then just, just to make conversation, I, I, I said to her, uh, I guess your parents don't really get along all that well. And she kind of chuckled and said, well, you don't really know the half of it. And uh, then she said this to me. Would you like to come to the reception? I have them seated together 
at the head table. There's really much great stuff. And the stuff I'm going to give you is not on content. It's not. It's presentation. The right. first thing, if you fix nothing else, if you do nothing else, find out what's formal. What did I know when I walked on the stage mm -hmm. and I was going to present to you? And what was spontaneous? What was synthesis on stage? We know none of it is, mm -hmm. but it must be differentiated, okay? What was a new idea that I just got, oh my God, right now, and I'm going to show it you. That's huge, okay? And it's huge, huge. I don't know what it is. You talk about the girlfriend, and it's with drug addicts, she's real cool because she do stuff, and mm -hmm. do stuff. Well, stuff is the... Stuff is a great adjective to use because you need to hit that because what is stuff to you might be different stuff to her and stuff to me. But the adjective stuff and you hit it, whatever it is that is stuff in every audience member's mind, they will play for themselves. You don't have to describe it. It's Mm -hmm. She would do stuff. <laughs> well, everybody <laughs> knows for themselves yeah, what, what stuff, is. stuff yeah. is. Okay? That was a wise choice, and you need to hit that. Okay? Okay? Um, okay. There were characters that came out. Commit to, commit to all your characters. These are the most characters okay. I've ever seen you do in a play of your writing. Now, uh, anyway, I'm going to leave it with that. And these are my notes, and I will leave them here. Very cool. Um, I hope it was of help. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is good stuff, trust me. Well, I, and you're going to have, this is the best thought-out script I've seen you do of the two shows I've seen. I, well, I hope you enjoyed this first installment of the behind the scenes and the making of a Rogue show for Rogue Festival 2012. Confessions of a Church Organist will be coming to a space near you, and hopefully we look forward to seeing you in the audience. See you next time.